I'm going for a silent build with 2025 cutting edge standards. Well, not the crazy RTX 90 high end over the top money burning sword, but still insane power with little to none fan noise with just the best value proposition that I was able to came up with. I wanted to have the best performance to price ratio and this will be my fourth build. The second sleeper build non-intrusive like a ninja super silent, but this time I'm doing it all on my own and no water cooling BS. And this is going to be a clean, easy and quick build with reliability being a top priority, a clean, easy and safe build that will hopefully endure and deliver for many years to come. And we will also optimize Windows 11 with OzLogic. So yeah, looks and sounds amazing, right? So let's get going. New drip. Got the new drip from myself. I bought all of that. None of that was for free. And I will use the TechDME toolset to assemble all of it and all in one hardware toolset right here. And we also have the same, when it gets to software. So for the Win 11 optimization, it's going to be the OzLogic suit. So if you're interested already, then check out the product links in the description and talking about the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by OzLogix, the all-in-one software solution that will keep your PC running at peak performance. This software suit will be your PC's new best friend. So whether your computer is slowed down, cluttered with junk or throwing weird errors, OzLogix has a full lineup of great tools to fix all of that fast. From boot speed, which cleans, tunes and speeds up your system big times to disk defrag, a registry cleaner, anti-malware and much more. They've got your PC covered from the bottom to the top. Each tool design is with ease of use and also safety in mind. So even non-techies can optimize their system like a pro with years of experience. Clean up space, protect your privacy, fix up stability issues and keep your system smooth, clean and responsive. And all of that with just a few clicks. The whole suit is amazing. And one of my favorite tools is the driver updater. Right here, the OzLogix driver updater with this, you can update all your drivers automatically and with that avoid those annoying hardware hiccups and crashes. It quickly scans your system and then updates all your drivers in just a few clicks. So no more hunting down rare to find installation files or even risk a wrong install. So whether it's your graphics card, your audio system, or even this mysterious Bluetooth bug, their driver updater has you covered. It's very intuitive to use, just a few clicks and you're up to date. And it is also much better and more precise than the clunky Windows update service. So if you want your PC running like it's fresh out of the box, then check out OzLogic's full suit to optimize your PC to the T with the first link in the description. Big thanks to OzLogic for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to it. So first of all, let's unbox all of that. This build will be optimized for silent processing. That's why we have the Silent Wings 4 in 140 millimeters. And we also have the Dark Rock Pro 5, very powerful, very silent. And also back here, we also have the Dark Power 13, extremely quiet, great performance. The only thing that's not really optimized for quietness is the graphics card. We will see how bad it is, but the rest should be extremely silent. Thanks to the four additional fans, we should get massive airflow so that hopefully Hopefully the graphics card will also get much more efficient cooling so that it doesn't have to power up that much. And one surprisingly epic part is also the main board right here. I was aiming for a much higher priced one, but this one actually came in with awesome features. And before we get to the sad part, we have these three M.2 SSDs to get at least also a little bit of storage on the computer. The rest will be outsourced with a NAS the Ryzen 9 9950XJD processor. And for it, we have the Crew Now Extreme thermal paste right there. And here we have the set part. I wanted to have much more RAM, but apparently we still have disability issues with DDR5. So I was going to go with only 64 gigs, but just recently this new G-Skill RAM was available to buy. So I naturally got this one, but just 96 gigs right there. But it should do the trick. Only two modules instead of four so that we don't run into stability issues like with my last build and the build before. Both times I had four RAM sticks and I never knew what actually was the big issue. Yeah, now let's take it all out. So doing it like this is obviously not best practice. By the way, here is the parts list and cost breakdown. Wow, what a monster. About ESD protection. 
I will not move a lot. When I do move, I will touch right here the contacts of the of just a power outlet to remove any static. And I want a clean build, quick, fast, precise. And before we get to actually building it, I will wash my hands for one more time because I'm also not going to wear gloves. Yeah, as I said, I did this for the video and definitely keep my safety precautions in mind. And now let's move on and put it all together. So this will be my platform, this nice foam piece right here. So motherboard goes on here. Oh, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. So let's get started with the easy parts. So just press this in. It will reveal the first NVMe slot. No thinking, just in there. It will click in place, removing the foil on both sides and clicking it in, boom. Simple as that. For the next one, we need a little tool. This will reveal the second and fourth NVMe slot. So it won't be visible, but I also don't want to scratch anything up. Okay, so the first one has the best cooling from both sides. The other one just from the top, but for the secondary and tertiary, this should be fine. Oh, that's funny. They have a little twisting holder right on. So this is my fourth, my fourth PC build, but the first one that I'm actually doing all on my own. But so far, so good. Removing these and now sealing it up. Of course, it was the wrong way around. So that was the easiest part done. Next, let's insert the CPU. That's gonna be a critical moment right there. This plastic thingy off with this. Look at this tiny little thing right there. Extremely powerful CPU. Just crazy, the tech nowadays. My last build was last year with the same concept. Same case, and now just 12 months later, we have massively upgraded parts once again. No more pins, just a flat connection type that's actually really, really laid back. Now next, I actually already want to install the RAM, which is absolutely looking stunning. We do have the foils still on it. A black and gold build, super shiny, beautiful RAM sticks that you won't see in the final build, so love it. And they have to go in the one here and the other one. Oh, they have it on the on both sides actually. So one right there on the outer side and this one right here in the middle position. So every other slot basically pressing them in carefully. So these open rock coolers are crazy massive. But yeah, this is pretty much the pita part right there, the hardest. Part. Oh, and we actually have a thermal grease in here as well, but this one is just the best out there. So I guess it's a no brainer. So here is a good tutorial on how to do it. So this should easily be possible. We basically just have to replace these parts and then we can screw this on with just two screws. That's kind of crazy, but what do I know? I was ex at least expecting four. Wow, these are massive screws, really tight fit. Yeah, this will definitely hold up also with only just two of these screws, but just a two point fixation is still a bit crazy to me. So we can remove these parts now. Oh yeah, these are really thick threads. We have the AMD bag with the screws and risers. So they will actually pop on here. They have a bigger cutout on one side, so you can't get it wrong. They, they will only fit on one way. And now we also have longer screws. That's not too bad. And when it gets to the grease, I've seen an, a very interesting video where the result was quite clear. If you do a dot or spread it out or use way too much, will basically yield this pretty much the exact same result. The only thing where you can mess up is if you use too little of the paste. So there we go. So a little bit too much is better than too little. So this will actually compress the plastic risers quite a bit, but at least this way the motherboard will not get damaged, I guess, because these are plastic parts. Next is already applying the grease. I haven't touched the CPU whatsoever, but regardless, I will give it a little wipe right there. And this one is actually a bit tricky because it has these weird edges. So let's get a bit on there. Oh, that's super stringy. Now let's get this off here. Even though you can see it, I still want this clean build in my head. You know what I mean? So now we can also use this little guy right there. Great coloring. You can see it very nicely. And I definitely want to get it everywhere. Also on these weird protrusions right there. These weird puddle piece edges. Oh my goodness, that was actually annoying. But it's now on there, probably a little bit too much. But again, that's not going to cause issues. And now we just have to think about the airflow. So it will go through, well, in this direction. And I think it's best, well, outside of the back. So just to be safe, something like this. So out the back should make total sense. So right there. Now we need to peel this off, very important step. And now, 
We need a long screwdriver that was inside of the package. And we'll just screw it in place firmly. And it's now also clear that inserting the RAM was indeed a good idea because as you can see now, it's no longer accessible. And I can already feel the squeezing down on the thermal paste. Oh yeah, we have them bang on, absolutely screwed on fully. And that's actually quite stable. Surprisingly, now we can also hook in the top cover and we have the performance and quiet mode. So naturally I will use the quiet mode just like this. That's perfect. This will click in place. And now we have the top cover as well. Oh, that's just a pad. So nice magnetic cover. Wow, that's looking great. That's actually looking amazing. And I will also right away hook up this fan. Previously, this was my biggest pain point. So the, the wiring of the build, uh, it's a bit annoying right there because this wire is all the way in here. So there we have it. So this one daisy chain it to the other one. And then we can simply plug this in right there. CPU fan one. It's actually very straightforward and nice. Tuck it away somewhere here. So that's the full main board done. And now we'll put it inside of the case. So next let's improve the airflow. So on the front we can fit three and then I still have four more. So let's go. So we have three on the top, one on the back. These are the silent wings. And then the three that came with the case in the front. So it will go in, out on the back, out on top. This will already saturate all these fan headers, but we have two missing on the bottom, but I think it's fine. I mean, that's like already crazy airflow, I guess. And right now I will also slide in the PSU. Nothing to it, just in here from the back. And I will see in a bit. So carefully in with the main board. Oh my goodness. Grab it right there. Yes. Oh, it makes it very easy. It has to slide in somewhat. I have to get all the ins and outs right on the back and that's right there. Oh, that was easy. And all the needed screws came with the case. So all of them are in place. Wow, that's holding up very nicely. It's rock solid. Right. Beautiful. And of course, before inserting the graphics card, we have to do all of the wiring. And it's all right there. And the back fan needs to go to the motherboard as well. So yeah, next up is wiring. So these are all the ports for the actual case. We have the audio USB drives that we have on the top. And we can route them through here and just hook them all up. So here for the fan splitter, we have the PWM cable going right there to the SUS fan 2. Right here we have the audio cable, here the header, front panel header, just like that. We have it right here in the manual, easy as that. USB, and then again up here I have the back fan. Yeah, next is already powering up everything with the PSU. So we have the power supply for the main board, P8 times 2 right there for the CPU and the other one plugging those in as an afterthought is definitely not the best idea but I was able to get it done and for the graphics card we have this dedicated 600 watts cable and it's an absolute beast and this will go straight in here so this will be the last component crazy nicely wrapped up pretty much on all sides that's a really nice and cool looking body with a massive cooler Great looking back plate, pretty dope actually. One on the bottom. Oh, and even these are protected. So it will go in right there. So these two have to go. Okay, easy as that. Yes, and now this monster. Oh, there is also a protector <laughs> on the pins. Very, very nice. So with extra care, pushing in the huge graphics card. And there we have it. So far I didn't drop a single screw inside of the case and this will be the last one. So there we go. Absolutely massive graphics card. This thing is massive. So let's power it up as well. And there we go. Beautiful. Now lastly a bit of cable management and then the build is actually done. And the final build turned out to be really clean. Love the RAM. It's just a shame that it won't be visible. Sweet. So as you saw, it turned out to be an excellent build, clean, no time wasted. And this build is giving the best stability I've ever experienced without any tuning. This is a night perfect system straight out of the box. My first computer build is by now 
15 years old. It's air-cooled and it is still performing and running great. The second one was a massive $6,000 mistake, a totally water-cooled behemoth. The motherboard was 1000 bucks, and after not only four years, it's already starting to leak. It's a complete catastrophe. Now, the third build was similar to this one, but with massive stability issues probably caused by the DDR5 RAM. I used four modules and it was a total Pita and it had crashes all the time. Now with this one, I have fixed all those issues. It is also very silent. And thanks to the reliable air cooling approach, I hope this will last me at least as long as my old build. So I hope this gave you some sort of orientation for your build. And honestly, I'm mostly impressed by the motherboard as I wanted to go again for a crazy expensive 1000 bucks, maybe MSI godlike or something like that. But that's totally unnecessary. This one does the job as good with an even nicer looking UI. I got the tip from Steven from Tech Magnet, by the way, so massive shout out. But in any case, if you need great tools, then I can highly recommend the TechDemi hardware tool set. And again, for great software tools for optimizing your PC, definitely check out the Auslogix suit because their software is a definitely drippy. Check out the product links in the description. I will list and link the best deals for you. But before you go, smash that like button, then subscribe, ring the bell and click all to never miss amazing Tech Magnet videos. That's it for this one. Enjoy your day and I will see you soon.